Okay, so good morning everyone. So I'm going to discuss week number two, atoms from the eyes of the philosophers, atomic number in its atomic mass. Okay, so first let me share our screen for you to see our PowerPoint. Okay, so this is week number two. First, we're going to discuss the early philosophers that tried to define what is an atom. So we have here Democritus and Aristotle. So uh, around 400 BC, Democritus uh, introduces the idea of an atom. So he thought that matter could not be divided indefinitely, and this led to the idea of atoms in a void. So according to him, all matter all matter here on earth uh, can uh, there is a one point that we cannot divide it furthermore uh, at the same time we have here uh, aristotle so aristotle he is the scientist who introduces the four elements okay so he introduced this idea or theory around 350 bc and according to him all matter here on earth is made up of four elements the earth fire water and air so we know to this day that aristotle was wrong however his theory persisted around 2000 years but those studies of democritus and aristotle sparks the curiosity curiosity of our scientists for them to identify what really is the building blocks of all matter. So here is the evolution of the atomic theory. So first we have atomism. It was introduced by Democritus, yes? According to him, all matter is composed of small indivisible particle called atomos, and later on we call them atoms. And we have the solid sphere model. Uh, it was introduced by John Dalton in year 1803. So according to him, atoms are indivisible and compounds are made up of the combination of two or more different types of atom. Also, we have the plum pudding model uh, introduced by J.J. Thomson in year 1897. So according to him, the atom is a sphere and all of it is a positive charge while the negative charge are embedded within it it was followed by ernest rutherford in the year 1911 he introduced the nuclear model so according to him electrons are orbiting within in a set so they are predictable path or they have a predictable path around and fix a positively charged nucleus so the nucleus is the center of the atom, and then it is fixed. It doesn't move unlike the electrical or negative charge, which is the electron. Next is Niels Bohr. He introduced the planetary model. So according to him, uh, electrons are arranged in concentric specific circular orbits around the nucleus. So this planetary model also helped us to identify the configuration of electron or where we can found those electron. And lastly, we have Erwin Schrodinger in the year 1926. He introduces the quantum model. So according to him, the location of the electron could not only be described being uh, in the planetary or orbits, but also it is in the part of cloud around the nucleus so he in uh, he added that here the atoms or the electrons within the atoms that can be found near the nucleus is easily found and while the farther or farthest electron uh, outside the nucleus are the hard to find electron so here are the image of those scientists who have a great contribution of our atomic model this is the John Dalton billiard ball model, J.J. Thompson, the plum pudding model, Ernest Rutherford, the, uh, the nuclear model, Niels Bohr, the planetary model, and Erwin Schrodinger, which is the electron cloud model. So let's discuss their contribution one by one. 
So according to John Dalton, atom is a solid sphere. Okay. So this sphere or this atom is known to be small and indivisible. Mean width. So when we say indivisible, uh, it is uh, it cannot be divided, created, nor destroyed. And all those elements are identical to their atomic number. So the different elements, they have also different properties, such as the boiling point and freezing point. Atoms of different elements combine to form a compound. So John Dalton is a chemist. So he, he concluded that, that the elements could bind with other types of elements for them to create a compound. Next, we have Joseph John Thompson. So Joseph John Thompson uh, uh, introduced the plum pudding model. And according to him, the whole atom is neutral because the atom itself is a positive charge sphere, while the negative ch charge or electron we know is uh, embedded or scattered around the nucleus. And he named it the plum pudding model. So from his experiment, uh, the cathode ray experiment, an atom uh, that consists of a positive and negative charge are making the atom itself electrically neutral because the positive and negative charge are equal. At the same time, he found that the negatively charged electron are fixed in the positive sphere. So this is an image of a cathode ray tube experiment of JJ. Thompson. Okay, so as we can see, uh, it is a cathode ray tube that emits a negatively charge. At the same time, uh, here in this experiment, JJ Thompson discovered the negative charge, and we know it as the electron. Next, we have the nuclear model of Ernest Rutherford. So this is the most common model we know. Right? Uh, here, he theorized that the atoms are mainly empty space. Uh, so it is not a solid, just like what J.J. Thompson and John Dalton uh, in, uh, produce an idea they, that the atoms are a solid sphere. At the same time, Ernest Rutherford discovered the positive charge of the nucleus. And that positive charge can be or is concentrated at the center of an atom known as the nucleus. So one of the greatest mind behind the model of atom is Ernest Rutherford because he not just discovered the proton or the positive charge, he also named the nucleus and the empty space of an atom. So the center of an atom is later on known or named as a nucleus while the electrons move around the nucleus. So many contributions done by Ernest Rutherford. This is a gold foil method. So as you can see, uh, he uses an alpha particle emitter and that alpha particle emitter will be bombarded with a gold foil method. And every time that the alpha particle hits the atom of the gold foil method, there are different angles or, or reflectors happen in that was being detected by a filament or a detecting screen. So here, uh, letter B, here in this part on the right side, we can, uh, they, it shows that if the atom itself is a positive charge and negative cons consists of a negative charge, why there is a line or a detecting screen uh, acceptor produce or film different angles because the nucleus itself is a mean width part of an atom, but it is concentrated with positive charge. So every time that the um, alpha particle just pass through the atom itself, it is just uh, passing through. But if the atom or if the alpha particle heats what, or bombarded directly by the nucleus, it will reflect it. 
Okay, so from that experiment, he discovered those uh, atomic model, which is the plum pudding model. And lastly, uh, next is the James Chadwick. Although James Chadwick doesn't uh, introduce a atomic model, he uh, he is he is the one who discovered neutron, or known as the neutral charge of an atom. So this is an image of a neutron. So from the discovery of J. Ernest Rutherford that the nucleus is just a positive charge. So from the discovery or experiment of James Chadwick, it is not just nucleus is, is not just a positive charge. It also contain a neutral charges. When we say neutral charges, it doesn't have any charge, nor positive or negative. So he conducted some experiment using a bombardment of beryllium atom with an alpha particle. So he uses an al also an alpha particle and he bombarded that particle to a beryllium sheet. And then those beryllium sheet knock up the positive charges. And that paraffin wax uh, uh, knock off the positive or the proton and it was being detected and countered for proton. So as we can see, neutron is uh, heavier, heavier than the proton. That's why they can knock off the proton of the paraffin wax. Next, we have the planetary model. So at this time, uh, the atom's subparticle is now complete. We have the electron, proton, and neutron. So now, Niels Bohr uh, introduces a new atomic model, which is the planetary model. And according to him, electron cannot just, or it's not just like outside the nucleus. They have their specific line. So the specific line is called as the energy shell. So this is where the electron is orbiting. So according to him, electrons orbit the nucleus and these orbits have specific size and energy. So not all electron could change easily on their orbits because it needed energy or large energy for them to move from one orbit to another. So any uh, electron that can be found uh, can be found near on the atom or not near the nucleus have the lowest energy, okay? while the energy on the outside or farther from the atom or nucleus is ha or have the highest energy. So, but the, the electron have also the ability to move between each shell when they are gaining or losing electron. That's why we have uh, negative charges and positive charges. So once the electron has been moved or lose or gain, there are charges. And then last is Erwin Schrodinger. So uh, Erwin Schrodinger introduced quantum mechanical model. So according to him, uh, electron doesn't orbit around, uh, doesn't orbit or revolve around orbits or energy shell, but it can be found in electron cloud. So any electron that is far from the Nucleus, a uh, low chance to find, while the electron that can be found near the nucleus uh, have a higher chance to find. So he discovered that electrons move around the nucleus and known as a cloud, not orbits. But this orbital help us to predict the area where we can find electron. And later on, on our next topic, we're going to discuss the electron configuration okay so the closer the positron the position to the nucleus the higher the chance to find a electron okay so next we have the atomic and atomic mass and number so this topic is already been discussed to you so we will just have a fresh introduction on how does the atomic number and atomic masses arrange in your periodic table and that was contributed by Henry Mosley. So Henry Mosley made the next great leap forward to 
with the idea of arranging the atomic number. So this fixed the few problems where had been with Mendeleev's table. Okay, so who is Dimitri Mendeleev? He is known to be a genius that arranged the elements by their increasing atomic mass. Actually, he predicted the properties of missing elements. So from his original arrangement of periodic table, there are some elements uh, with a question mark. Uh, it means that the elements are not yet discovered, but he knows that this element have this specific atomic mass. Okay? So he predicted the elements or the missing elements. So how can we write the atomic number and atomic mass of each element? We are using these symbols. Okay. So X is the chemical symbols can be found on our periodic table, as well as the atomic mass and atomic number. Sometimes in other references, atomic mass uh, or atomic number is known as atomic weight. So how can we know the atomic number? So atomic number can be found in our periodic table. So the atomic mass is addition or the combination of the number of proton and neutron. For example, we have carbon element, okay? So carbon element is six atomic number. So therefore, the element carbon also consists of six neutron because in a stable element, the proton, neutron, and electron have the same number. So six plus six is 12. Therefore, the atomic mass of the carbon is 12 because it contains proton and neutron. So here, uh, using your periodic table, what and what you know about the atomic number, mass, isotopes, and electron, fill in the charge, chart. So plus, this is the formula. Atomic number is equal to the number of proton, always. It cannot be uh, dissimilar because if we change the atomic number, we are also changing the atomic uh, type of elements. If we have or we have different number of neutrons, uh, we are dealing with isotopes. Those are same elements but different in atomic mass and number of neutron. So remember... Always remember the number of proton, neutron, and electron are similar in stable element. Okay, if if an atom has no charge, therefore uh, the proton and electron is equal. So we will write zero. If the pos if we have or we are dealing with a cation or a positive charge, it means that the number of proton is greater than the number of electron. So we will minus whatever the charge of our element. And if we are dealing with an ion, therefore the electron is greater than the proton. So uh, if we have negative charge, we need to add number of electron, whether or whatever the number or charge is given. Okay, so let's try our problem. Okay, so this is our problem. First item, the only given value is eight. Number of protons, neutron, and electron is eight. And how can we find the element symbol, atomic mass, and atomic number? you need to consult your periodic table. So any element that have atomic number eight, same with the number of proton, and that is, okay, so that is oxygen. So we are 
dealing with oxygen and the symbol of oxygen is O. Atomic number of oxygen is eight, similar with its number of proton. So now uh, we need to add the number of proton and neutron for us to find the atomic mass. So eight plus eight is 16. And then here, the only thing we need to do is to find the charge. As we can see, the number of our neutron is similar to the number of protons. So therefore, there is no charge. So it is zero. Okay. So the charge is zero. Next item is potassium. Okay. So the given is potassium. Atomic mass is 39. Okay. And the charge is positive one. So here, the proton Okay, so as we can see, or we, if we will recall, if we have cation, therefore, the proton is greater than the number of electrons, okay? So potassium, the symbol is K. Atomic number is, the atomic number is 19, okay? So it can be found in our periodic table. So therefore, atomic number is equal to the number of proton. So it is also 19. But this time, uh, it is not equal to our number of neutron because 39 minus 19 is equal to 20. Okay. So if we have positive charge so therefore we will minus it to the number of proton the answer is 18 okay next item is bromine so bromine uh, br symbol the given value of neutron is 45 and the charge is negative one so bromine is our element And then the atomic number is 35 based on our periodic table. We can You can consult our periodic table. Next is our number of proton. It is also 35 because they are similar all the times. So this time, we need to compute okay, the atomic mass. So 35 plus 45 is 80. Okay, Even though you, you didn't consult our periodic table, you can now compute the mass because we are or we have the number of proton and neutron. So this time, since it contain negative charge, so the electron is not similar with our number of protons. So therefore, since it is negative one, just plus one, it is 36. Next, zinc. So our Next or last element is zinc. Why? Because the atomic number is 30. Okay, so this is zinc. The symbol is capital Z, small letter N. The atomic number is given 30. Therefore, the proton is also 30. Now, what is or how many are the neutrons in the zinc element that we are dealing? So 35 minus 30 is Five. There is only one, uh, there is only five number of neutron. Next, as we can see, the proton and electron are equal. So they are neutral. There is no charge. Okay. So you can solve it. Okay. You can practice it on your own after you watch this video. Okay. So that's all. Thank you and goodbye.